Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we are in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Ibrahim Sultan, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at UPMC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dr. Sultan, it's great to see you again here at STS. Great to see you, Adam. Yeah, so we're here, physicians from all over the world talking about the latest treatments in valve therapy. And at the same time, we're getting questions from patients who need help. And to educate them, we got a question from Denise who asks, hi, Adam, I have moderate aortic stenosis. I feel short of breath and tired at times. What are the dangers and risks of moderate aortic stenosis? Yeah, that's a great question. And we see patients in the office who come with moderate aortic stenosis, such as Denise, that have symptoms. So the first thing I look at is, do they really have moderate aortic stenosis? Because there's a variety of different ways to measure aortic stenosis or aortic gradients. And so if your heart happens to be a little bit weak or a little bit bloated, or if you have significant leak across the aortic valve, it's possible that your moderate aortic stenosis may actually be worse than what's described. Now, the other way to look at it is one of the most dangerous things about moderate aortic stenosis is that it can progress to severe aortic stenosis. What we don't want to do is intervene too early before therapy is needed. Now, what it does is it resets the clock. Now that Denise has her own native valve, we can wait as long as that's truly disease before we replace it. Because the mortality, whether it's TAVR or heart surgery, is still not zero consistently. It's exceedingly low and it's exceedingly safe, but it's still not zero. And so what I would suggest is to ensure that the testing is done appropriately. It's done at routine intervals so we can surveil what this valve looks like and ensure that it truly is moderate aortic stenosis, particularly when Denise is feeling these symptoms. Wow, well, thank you so much, Denise. I hope that helped you. And I love how you commented on the regular monitoring and tracking of the disease to ensure progression doesn't lead to more potential risk for Denise. So on behalf of Denise and patients all over the world, Dr. Sultan, thanks for everything you and your team are doing at UPMC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thanks for being with me today. Great. Thank you, Adam. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.